Welcome to Words to Live By, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each week, we will share some of the wit and wisdom of Ronald Reagan. In essence, words to live by. And the content is made up of radio addresses and speeches he delivered from the 1960s through the 1980s. This week's feature, taken from the CD Stand Up Reagan, we've compiled some of President Reagan's funniest stories and jokes as we present to you this Best of Humor podcast. Ronald Reagan's sense of humor, wrote presidential biographer Lou Cannon, was a key to his character and his willingness to poke fun at himself as a vital component of his popularity. Yes, he quipped, kidded, and bantered in nearly every White House meeting, but he also used humor to express very fundamental ideas. In the 1980 campaign when seeking to find the right metaphor to illustrate our nation's current economic crisis, Ronald Reagan himself drafted this line. A recession is when your neighbor loses his job. A depression is when you lose yours. And recovery is when Jimmy Carter loses his. As great a speaker as he was, and as inspiring as his spoken visions could be, Ronald Reagan was equally happy telling a joke to a small group in a social situation. He would be quite animated and always laughed heartily at the punchline, eyebrows raised, eyes crinkled head back, his wide smile lighting up the room. Maybe it was the Hollywood part of him that made him feel good about having made his audience laugh, and he was not afraid to laugh at himself. At the annual White House Correspondents' Dinners, no one enjoyed the comedians more than when they poked fun at the president than the president himself. (laughs) I just want to... Oh, I can't resist. I'm supposed to quit right here. But, oh yes. uh, But in view... In view of the fast things that I just said, I don't know whether you know it or not, but I have a new hobby. I am collecting stories that I can actually prove are told among the Russian people. They make them up themselves, they tell them between themselves, reveals they've got a great sense of humor, and they've also got a little cynical attitude about things in their country. And uh, one of these stories, the one I'm going to tell you, I told to General Secretary Gorbachev. And he laughed. (laughs) The story was an American and a Russian arguing about their two countries. And the American said, look, in my country, I can walk into the Oval Office. I can pound the president's desk and say, Mr. President, I don't like the way you're running our country. And the Russian said, I can do that. The American said, you can? He says, yes. I can go into the Kremlin to the general secretary's office, pound his desk and say, Mr. General Secretary, I don't like the way President Reagan's running his country. (laughs) Speaker, Mr. President, distinguished members of the Congress, honored guests and fellow citizens. Today marks my first State of the Union address to you, a constitutional duty as old as our Republic itself. President Washington began this tradition in 1790 after reminding the nation that the destiny of self-government and the preservation of the sacred fire of liberty is finally staked on the experiment entrusted to the hands of the American people. For our friends in the press who place a high premium on accuracy, let me say, I did not actually hear George Washington say that. I can define middle-aged. That's when you're faced with two temptations and you choose the one that'll get you home at nine o'clock. We have a realtor who was out driving on a back road on his way to look at some property and suddenly noticed down beside him was a chicken keeping pace with him and he was doing 60 miles an hour. And suddenly the chicken spurted out ahead of him and it looked to him as if the chicken had three legs. And then he turned and went down a sign road and into a barnyard, and the driver turned down that lane, drove into the barnyard. There was a farmer there, and he asked him, he said, did you see a chicken go by here? And the 
farmer said, yep. He says, did they have three legs? And the farmer says, yep. I raise them that way. I breed them. He says, you do? He said, how, how come? Well, he said, I just love the drumstick, and Ma always liked the drumstick, and now Junior's come along, and he likes it, and we just got tired of fighting over it, so I've been breeding three-legged chickens. And the driver said, well, how do they taste? He says, I don't know. I haven't been able to catch one yet. More from President Reagan's address after this message. The Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation is the nonprofit organization created by President Reagan himself and specifically charged by him with continuing his legacy and sharing his principles, individual liberty, economic opportunity, global democracy, and national pride. We must remain vigilant and work together to share these conservative principles with younger generations. Your role is critical to move our mission forward Thank you for your continued support. Please visit reaganfoundation.org slash give. That's reaganfoundation.org slash give. Now back to President Reagan. Mr. Truitt, your question to President Reagan. Mr. President, I want to raise an issue that I think has been lurking out there for two or three weeks and cast it specifically in national security terms. You already are the oldest president in history, and some of your staff say you were tired after your most recent encounter with Mr. Mr. Uh, Mondale. Um, I recall yet that President Kennedy had to go for days on end with very little sleep during the Cuba Missile Crisis. Is there any doubt in your mind that you would be able to function in such circumstances? Not at all, Mr. Truett, and I, and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> there's nothing I enjoy more than a little country humor. One of the great things about having you here is that I get to tell a farm joke. <laughs> now first I need a setting, but um, uh, Rick, uh, you're from Kansas, right? You bet. Okay, this takes place in Kansas. Uh, there was an old Kansas farmer there. He had a piece of creek bottom land that had never been developed at all. It was all rocks and brush and all messed up. And he started in on it, clearing it, the underbrush and hauling away the rocks, and then cultivating the soil there. And he planted a garden, everything from vegetables on to corn and and uh, it really became a garden spot, and he was pretty proud of what he'd done. So one Sunday morning in church after the service, he asked the preacher if he wouldn't stop by to have a look. Well, the preacher arrived, and he took one look, and he said, oh, this is wonderful. He said, these are the biggest tomatoes I've, I've ever seen. Praise the Lord. And he said, those green beans, that squash, those melons, he said, the Lord really has blessed this place. And look at the height of that corn. He said, the God has really been, been good. And the old boy was listening to all this, and he was getting more and more fidgety. And finally, he blurted out, Reverend, I wish you could have seen it when the Lord was doing it by himself. <laughs> and as he was falling, grabbed a limb sticking out the side of the cliff and looked down 300 feet to the canyon floor below and then looked up and said, Lord, if there's anyone up there, give me faith. Tell me what to do. And a voice from the heavens said, if you have faith, let go. <laughs> he looked down at the canyon floor and then took another look up and says, is there anyone else up there? I've always thought of the importance of communication and how much a part it plays in what you and I, what all of us are trying to do. And one day, a former place kicker with the Los Angeles Rams, who later became a sports announcer, Danny Villanueva, told me about communications. He said he'd been having dinner over at the home of a young ball player with the Dodgers. The young wife was bustling about getting the dinner ready. They were talking sports, and the baby started to cry. And over her shoulder, his busy wife said to the ball player, change the baby. 
And he was a young fella, and he was embarrassed in front of Danny, and he said, what do you mean, change the baby? I'm a ball player. That's not my line of work. And she turned around, put her hands on her hips, and she communicated. <laughs> she said, look, Buster, you lay the diaper out like a diamond. You put second base on home plate. You put the baby's bottom on the pitcher's mound. You hook up first and third, slide home underneath, and if it starts to rain, the game ain't called. You start all over. <laughs> There aren't any words to, that can properly tell you how bittersweet these days are and the things that we would like to say to all of you. You know, I keep remembering back and uh, not too far when someplace along the line there would always be a picture of a president standing in the old office uh, looking out the window, usually the picture from behind and he's standing there, and then his words are quoted as a tag for that picture about, this is the loneliest place, and what a lonely, and so forth. I don't know about them. I haven't been lonely one minute. <laughs> Even in the face of adversity, President Reagan was able to use humor to put people at ease. During the 1981 assassination attempt on his life, with an assassin's bullet just millimeters from his heart, President Reagan used his unique God-given skill to convey calm and assurance to those desperately working to save his life. He looked at his doctors just prior to surgery and joked, I hope you're all Republicans. And of course, he said to his beloved wife, Nancy, Honey, I forgot to duck. While recovering post-surgery, he even wrote a note to one of his nurses saying, If I had this much attention in Hollywood, I would have stayed there. It was Ronald Reagan's happiness, his optimism, his enjoyment of life, and his undying belief in the inherent goodness and spirit of the American people that got us to believe in ourselves again and put our country back on track. It can be said that that, more than anything else, is the enduring legacy of President Reagan. If you've enjoyed listening to the Best of Humor podcast, you can purchase the complete collection, Stand Up Reagan, available in both CD and DVD formats at the Reagan Museum store. Just go to reaganfoundation.org forward slash store. Thank you for listening. For more information on the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute, including information on how to become a member, information on upcoming exhibits at the Reagan Library, or more information on the legacy of President Reagan, please visit reaganfoundation.org. And don't forget to like and follow the Reagan Foundation on all social media platforms. Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Words to Live By podcast in your iTunes or Google Play stores and on other podcast platforms as they become available. New episodes of Words to Live By come out every Tuesday. Like what you hear? Check out our A Reagan Forum podcast featuring great speeches delivered at the Reagan Library. New episodes drop every Thursday. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook, at Ronald Reagan 40 on Twitter, and Reagan Foundation on YouTube. Also, search for us on SoundCloud and Stitcher.